It was on this spot that Jesus brought his disciples from the temple behind me, the Dome of the Rock area there. He brought them up here on Tuesday and delivered what is called the Olivet Discourse, Olivet Mount of Olives. But notice there's a key phrase in Matthew 24 in your Bibles. The, what Jesus was doing with them is, in Matthew 24, verse 3, it says, as he sat on the Mount of Olives. Where are you sitting right now? Where? Mount. Only Donna knows where we are. Everybody, you're on the Mount of Olives. Where are you sitting right now? Mount of Olives. Yes. Now, later, they built the church right there called Dominus Flevit because Luke tells us, and Matthew, if you look at Matthew 23, 37, um, just above, you're in 24, back up two verses. Notice what it says. Jesus says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, uh, you who kill the prophets. That is Christ weeping over the city of Jerusalem. That's why this is called Dominus Flevit. Dominus, our Lord, Flevit, wept. And then chapter 24, look at verse 3. He starts telling them the answer to their question. So he's sitting on the Mount of Olives. And so in, in verse 3, you're sitting on the Mount of Olives. And if you're a Bible marker, you can write Dominus, D-O-M-I-N-U-S. In fact, it's in your notes right there. It's spelled Dominus Flevit under Lesson 34. You're sitting there, and, and Jesus uh, is sitting, and they ask him privately. So they're asking for a, a private briefing. This is the disciples all alone right up here. The breeze is blowing. They're sitting up here in the shadow. They're looking at the temple, and they said to him, What will the sign of your coming and the end of the age be. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about here, just briefly. Take out your notes, and I want to share with you what the scriptures say are the signs. Now, these are, and let me read to you, what does the world look like when Jesus comes back? Uh, most of what Jesus described were events and elements that have always been somewhere on earth occurring. But he tells us when those events and elements begin to go global, watch out, okay? The first one is, when Christ returns, there is global travel. It says in Matthew, or I mean in Daniel 12, 4, that people are running to and fro. Did you know people have traveled all the time? Always traveled. It's never been that you can get on a scheduled flight from Los Angeles to Tokyo, and you know exactly how many hours, until modern times. Secondly, when Christ returns, there's a global explosion of knowledge. It, what Daniel said is, knowledge will... Uh, and, and the Hebrew word is just overflow. Knowledge is overflowing. In fact, if we were wireless right now, you all could type in any word I was saying and would instantly get a compendium of all knowledge that is known to humanity that's on Google. I mean, they have scanned every book they can get. It's just unbelievable. Number three, when Christ returns, there's global telecommunication and television. In fact, if you want to read Revelation 11, 9 and 10 and 17, 8, it clearly says that at the end, events that are happening behind me in Jerusalem, everyone in the world is watching. The two witnesses come to that western wailing wall. They come somewhere in that area by the temple that is rebuilt, and they are killed by the world leader, the beast. And it says the whole world watches their bodies laying. You know what that is? That's global telecommunications, television. Uh, number four, when Christ returns, there is global tracking and positioning. How do we know that? Because it says in Revelation 13 that the Antichrist, the beast, is going to track down people that are trying to make purchases without his system. And here's the last one. When Christ returns, there's global weather gone wild. The, the scripture said there will be a time when weather would be so bad that not just a few, but the whole world would be troubled, fearful, and killed by the fear of chaotic weather that would become prevalent. That's Luke 21, 25, and 26. It says people's hearts will fail them as they see what's coming in the crashing waves and the weather. To end this time, turn to Matthew 25, because after this lesson of Matthew 24, Actually, we can start in chapter 24 and verse 32. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 24, 32, Now learn this parable. Verse 33, When you see all these, these things, know it's near at the doors. What he said is, these are going to be trends, and they're going to start small, 
and they're going to start growing. And he says, when you see these trends coming, you know you're getting near the end. The whole application of how to get ready for the return of Christ is in chapter 25. He says, do what I left you to do. Don't get distracted. Don't let your love grow cold. Make sure that you invest the talents I gave you. Don't bury them. That's what the Lord said. He gave these signs on this spot to help us do what he left us to do. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for telling us the signs of the times. But you didn't tell us that so that we'd always be looking for all these signs, but rather that we would be faithful witnesses. And we want to be that. We want to be doing what you left us to do when you come back. And we ask you to deeply impress on our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen.